Hey everyone, it's the Slick Cuber. Today, I'm going to be unboxing the GAN 354M and giving you my first impressions. So the GAN 354 is a new cube by GAN, and this isn't a successor to the SM, this is actually kind of a new line. As the name suggests, it is 54 millimeters, not 56. Let's go ahead and just get right into this box. This is the box that came in. Uh, it was wrapped in bubble wrap and had an envelope on it, but I took that off off camera. Uh, so let's go ahead and just take this off. Got a nice sleeve here over the box. Don't need that anymore. Uh, here's the box. It's a pretty standard little black box. Let's go ahead and see what's in it. Okay, so first thing we have is we have the puzzle itself and it comes in a neat little case like this. I gotta say, it is really weird seeing a GAN puzzle and sticker list. It's gonna take some getting used to. Um, we have the usual pamphlet on how to solve it. I'm assuming most of us don't need this since you're usually not buying a GAN puzzle unless you already know how to solve a three by three. And last we have this, I'm assuming, yep. This is the GES system. I think that it actually ships with greens in here. So they give you yellows, purples, and blues. It looks like they've gotten rid of red and orange completely. And I can't say I'm surprised because I don't think I've heard of a single person using red or orange springs. So it was really just a waste of plastic. Uh, nothing else in here, so that's it. I'm gonna put these over to the side for now. Here's a little case it comes in. Let's go ahead and open this up. It's also wrapped in plastic on the inside. see if I can open this. I find it kind of funny that I can basically solve Rubik's Cubes in my sleep, but it takes me forever, there it is, to find the opening for the package. All right, so here we have the puzzle itself. It is a stickerless GAN puzzle, which is really weird. One of the first things I noticed is the black internals. You can even just kind of tell looking through there. It gives it a really like dark feel. It makes the colors look kind of darker, kind of similar to how, like here we have the SM. Kind of similar to how I've always felt like the black black sticker cubes make the colors look just a little bit like they pop a little bit more just because surrounding by black you get that kind of contrast. This is kind of cool in that it's a stickerless, but it's still it's really dark on the insides and in between the pieces, and I really like the kind of look. Uh, we also have this new magnet positioning system that they introduced in the GAN 460 where the magnets are placed right here so you can see them. Right away feeling it, uh, I can tell you that the plastic is not slippery at all, which I wasn't too worried about, though I do have the uh, stickerless 2x2 by GAN. And my only complaint about this is that the plastic is like a kind of frosted slippery plastic. And it's, it's not a problem too much of the time, but every once in a while in the middle of my two by two solves, this will kind of slip out of my hand. And I just was worried that they might use it the same for this. Um, so I'm glad that they went to just normal plastic. All right, let's go ahead and give this thing some first turns. Now this is, this is not bad at all. It's a little dry for my taste. I'm definitely gonna have to put some lube in here. Um, it's a little loose. Uh, M sizes are a little hard because it's, I'm overshooting them because it's way too loose. I'm definitely gonna have to tighten it and add some lube to kind of slow it down. Um, but other than that, it's, it's really not bad at all. There were some lockups, but I'm like 99% certain it's just because this is, it's way too dry and loose for me right now. I think once I put some lube in here and maybe even replace the green ones that are in here with the yellow ones, uh, this will definitely be very, very good. One thing I noticed while I'm solving it is that the corners are a lot sharper than the SM. And that's something that I don't really think about ever when I'm solving because it's never really been like a big drastic difference, but this, this has some definitely sharp edges. Uh, it's not, it doesn't hurt my hand or anything. It's just, it's kind of noticeable when I'm holding it like this because these fingers rest right here. I can definitely feel how sharp it is right there. Now this cube is gonna be really popular for one-handed because of its smaller size. So let's go ahead and try some one-handed algorithms. It's, it's really loose. Um, it's, it's not too bad, but it's just, it's way too loose. I can't, I can't seem to control it. You can see how it's overshooting even just the simplest of turns. Um, I don't think that's a problem with the cube. I'm I'm really excited to go set this up and you know put the slower GS springs in there, add some lube in there because I think with some lube, 
this will turn into a perfectly fine puzzle. I am really excited to set this thing up and, and get it performing like I want to because everything else is perfect. I think the magnet strength is perfect. The plastic feels really good. The size doesn't bother me at all and, and I have pretty big hands. This is the GAN Air SM and it's 56 millimeters and you can see in my palm, it doesn't even really touch the sides of my palm. I, I have very large hands. My pinky is longer than one side of the GAN. And I gotta say the 54 millimeters on this does not really bother me at all. It's I don't think that's what causing all those lockups that I keep getting. I think it's just, it's too dry and it's too loose. I need to tighten it a lot more. Uh, let's go ahead and take this apart and look at what the Eternals are. So here we have an edge piece. We can see that standard honeycomb design. The magnets are placed right there. The black internals. It doesn't look like the torpedoes are any different at all from standard uh, GAN pieces. Let's look at a corner here. Uh, yeah, nothing too crazy about the corner either. Uh, honeycomb design, the magnets are in the edge. Um, there is a little bit of lube, a little bit of factory lube on there, though I'm definitely going to wipe it all off and put my own on there because it's just, it's not really, it's not slow enough. I, I really don't like how fast this thing is, and I think that's what's causing my lockups. So that's about it for my initial impressions. I wasn't too impressed with its performance right out of the box, but I think that's entirely because the it's just way too loose and it's it's a little too dry. Even though there is factory lube in here, it's just it's too dry and loose for me and it's just causing me to overshoot basically everything. You can actually very easily see how this is way too fast for my preference because if I do a standard flick, so this should go from blue to orange, it actually almost does a U2 flick. It does one and a half. Um, and that's just, it's way too fast. And this is what's causing all my lockups, especially with one-handed. If I do these exact same flicks on, let's say my GAN Air SM, you can see it's perfect in just, it does one layer turn. There's no problem at all. It doesn't overshoot or anything. But if I do that same strength back on the 354, it almost does a complete U2 flick. And that's just the main problem I have with this cube. Everything else is really nice. The plastic feels nice. The magnets feel nice. The size does not bother me, even though I do have large hands. Uh, I like the look of the black internals. I like the look of the magnets. I like the shades on this thing. I like the weight. I like everything. I just don't like how loose it is. So I'm really excited to go set it up. And I will be doing a full review of what I think about this cube after I set it up and solve it 200, 300 times. Uh, so look for that in a couple days. It shouldn't be too long before I have that up. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.